People cheat. Before you get all, that's BS, my partner is a saint. I agree, I was a bit harsh, so let's restart. People cheat, sorry. Infidelity is often related to a men's thing, but that's BS. Women also do it, and they have a pretty good scientific excuse. When a girl cheats, she's probably seeking different guys for different purposes. This theory is known as the dual mating strategy. So guy number one is like the high school sweetheart who brings her stability. He's beautiful, committed, a hard worker, a protector, and all that rom-com stuff. And guy number two, well, he's symmetrical. Yes, as in physically symmetrical everywhere. But why in the world would a woman trade in her ride or die for a guy whose body features are perfectly balanced between left and right? The real question isn't why, it's when. Women tend to cheat more often when they're ovulating. It's like their body knows it's a narrow window for getting these awesome genes. So, symmetrical dude shows up and their brain goes like, whoa, awesome genes. That's because we humans tend to grow all nice and symmetrical. Asymmetries are usually a sign of things like diseases or mutations. All of this is happening unconsciously, of course. It's not like the women are out there chasing guys with a measuring tape in hand. People might have the little fling on the side for many, many factors like anger, self-esteem, autonomy, lack of love, low commitment, need for variety, neglect, sexual desire. Whew. The motivations behind infidelity are such a complex equation that they not only influence why people cheat, but also how long they do so. Before we jump into the stats on cheating, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And hey, the comment section is open for venting about your cheating ex. We're all ears. So here are the numbers. One in five married people cheat on their partners. And if we talk about young lovebirds and dating relationships, it's a whopping one in three. For years, we've tried to explain that the main motivation for cheating is a meh relationship. Like when people think that something is missing in their love life. But studies say that cheaters often rate their marriages as happy or very happy. So even if someone feels they've hit the jackpot in love, they can still cheat. I can practically see your mind doing somersaults right now. Like, hold up, if that's true, how can I ever relax? Before you start freaking out about it, take the advice from the expert and best-selling author Esther Perot and stop freaking out about it. According to her, sure, cheating is terrible. It makes us doubt how solid our relationship is. But the best thing to do is to take off the blindfold and acknowledge that all people might cheat one day. Then think to yourself, I'm going to do everything in my power to protect my relationship, but I'm not going to live stressing over it. Hmm, that doesn't really explain why happy people cheat, does it? Let's go back then. So even if someone feels they've hit the jackpot in love, they can still cheat. Breakups ain't no dirty secret anymore. People are more embarrassed about sticking around in a miserable relationship than they are about leaving one. If people are cheating instead of just splitting up, it means there's still stuff in the relationship worth keeping. Some folks even cheat to try to save their relationships, as weird as it might sound. As if they've been trying to say something for a long time, but they're not being hurt. Perhaps picking the right partner from the get-go is the best way to avoid a heartbreak. Hey ladies, you should definitely trust your eyes. A study suggests that women are the best at judging a man as a cheater or not a cheater just by looking at him. Girls might have turned into Sherlock-level detectives as a form of adaptation, since having an unfaithful partner could risk their plans of becoming moms. Infidelity is often linked with more masculine traits. Wider face? Nah. Cheater. Next! Thin jawline? Great. He's a good catch. Faces that look more masculine are linked to higher levels of testosterone. You know, the hormone that is all about the pleasures of the flesh? If a guy's got loads of it, he may be more willing to take higher risks, including cheating on his partner. You're not good with faces, huh? No worries, just listen up. If someone's got a deep voice like this, it could mean they're not faithful. Same goes for girls. Voice pitch can reflect a person's real characteristics. Deeper voices are normally related with someone that is strong, tall, and has a higher level of testosterone. Testosterone, again? This hormone seems to be the real reason why people can't keep their hands to themselves, but hey, I've gotta play devil's advocate here. Actually, when someone's got a lot of testosterone, they really go the extra mile to keep their partner happy and loyal. They're the ones that do anything to show they're serious, like picking up flowers, giving diamond gifts, and even hiring a flash mob crew to propose in the middle of Times Square. Okay, too much. Usually, humans are all about long-term commitment. 
raising kids together, and playing house. Just like owl monkeys, they're like the OGs of fidelity because sticking with one partner and being a good parent is built into their DNA, but that's pretty rare in nature. Take your dog, for example. Does he seem to be looking for an exclusive relationship? Nah, most animals couldn't care less about the whole death do us part thing. So animals aren't big on monogamy and humans hardly keep their no cheating promise. But that doesn't mean we have to put up with cheating. Check out swans, for example. They're all about that loyalty for life vibe and sticking with their partners for the long haul. But a couple of years ago, swans that lived in a lake in England actually split up. Now they're both living their best lives with their new partners. Well, at least we think so. See, even swans can cope with divorce and they can't even afford therapy. So why shouldn't we?